Hello, hello. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator, esthetician, Korean sunscreen fanatic. And today we're here to talk about a Korean sunscreen I got a lot of comments about. Many moons ago, I did a video talking about some of the sunscreens from a brand called Village 11. They were Korean sunscreen. They caught my eye on Yes Style because their packaging is like really interesting. And I'd never heard of the brand before and they were really affordable sunscreens. So I bought the first three. I had the video up here in the cards. And then in the last couple of weeks, I uploaded a full Centella skincare body care routine. I actually mentioned that specific sunscreen in the video and that is specifically the Sika Sun Lotion SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. I had a lot of people in the comments telling me how much they enjoyed it, how much they liked it, how much they prefer this one over the other Village 11 sunscreens. I feel like in that video, I didn't give the sunscreen that could have a chance to really shine. So I wanted to give it its own dedicated review video. So again, this is from Village 11. This is their Sika Sun Lotion. This is SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. This has 80 mil in it and it only costs, I mean, here in the UK, it's about 10 pounds. When you go on their like Korean website, they talk about how this is essentially a family size. So they're like, oh, it's not, it's not 50 mil, it's 80 mil because it's family size. To which I'm like, is this like family size for like one picnic outing for a family of four? Like give me three times the size, then we'll say it's family size. But I'll get into the marketing a bit in a second. And we're going to do a little throwback for the OG fans, you'll know this, but we're going to do the six Fs of the sunscreen. We're going to talk about the feel, finish, filters, formulation, foundation wear, and fragrance components of the sunscreen overall. And you'll see me do application footage where I will put on an eighth of a teaspoon to cover my full face and we're going to see the finish of it all as well as how it wears with makeup. So the marketing behind this because I was like why is this why is there so much hype around the sunscreen? So based off what Yesdao and the brand themselves say I compiled them together. Shield delicate skin from UV rays while combating external aggressors with this sunscreen fitted with SPF 50 plus PA 4 plus and blended with naturally derived skin soothers such as Sika and Heartleaf Extracts. Unique gel water drop formula helps to strengthen the skin's moisture barrier for steady hydration. Eight weightless sun lotion with powerful broad spectrum, blah, blah, blah. One thing I want to point out, which is really interesting. And again, I went to Yes Style, read their things, but they didn't have a lot. And then Stavana didn't have it available at the moment. So I went to the Village 11 Korean website, which they had an English version of. And one thing they make a point of over and over and over and over on their information guide for the product is that this is waterproof. Very rarely do you see a a Korean waterproof sunscreen. And a lot of you guys ask me for them so much, but realistically, I will look and research and try to find these sunscreens. And not a lot of brands really advertise or really go for that specific marketing claim. A lot of them just really care about daily wear and like elegance and whatnot. The only thing I will know is that they don't really specify the extent of waterproofness or how long that's going to last. Here in the US, we have specific metrics. I believe it's 40 or 80 minutes. Other countries are able to list for up to a certain amount of hours, but they don't. Note Biore and a lot of Japanese sunscreens who do make waterproof claims don't do that either. And neither does Misha, who's one of the only other like mainstream Korean brands I know who does make waterproof claims or water resistant claims, sorry. And they never designate a length of time. I also do want to note that they specifically do stay waterproof a lot for some reason, even though realistically water resistant, sweat resistant is the more appropriate terminology. That is also in regards to if you get wet, you let it air dry, not by physically removing the water with a towel or something. That's going to disrupt the sunscreen film. Getting to my six Fs. Again, I'm going to have everything split up here in the description box for the timestamps. So if you want to go to a specific part to fast forward, you can find that below. The first that's going to be the feel of this. This is a cream sunscreen. It's not really much of a gel. At this point, it's a little bit more rich and it has a little bit more emollients and body to it. You're going to see when I get to the formulation component, but there's a lot of emollients in this. There's a good amount of oils in this. And now that I know that this is supposed to be a water resistant sunscreen, this texture makes a lot more sense to me. And that specifically translates into the finish of it. It's a cream texture. It's a lightweight cream. I'm going to give it that much, like a whipped cream. But as you work it in, it has some shine. It has some gloss. It has some glow. It's definitely a uh, moisturizing sunscreen texture. The finish is radiant. It's glowy. It definitely has a vibrance to it, which having oily skin is something that I look at and I'm a little bit weary because that usually translates to it's going to be greasy. I'm going to be shiny in the like, middle of the day. So, and that was something people told me because the Village 11, there's a yellow sunscreen and I really liked because I'm like this has a moisturizing texture to it but it's definitely oily skin appropriate like it's not going to be too heavy too greasy too emollient but there are people with dry skin who were like oh no this is definitely more moisturizing 
and I can tell. So the filters for this, and this is an area I got really confused at because I checked YesStyle because I bought this on YesStyle and something didn't seem right to me. So I went to the Korean Village 11 website, two very different ingredients lists. The YesStyle list listed the UV filters as polysilicone 15, Uvinol A+, Uvinol T150, and amyloxate. The Korean website, the Korean Village 11 website, which I'm more inclined to trust because it's the brand's website. I feel like they're going to have a more updated or specific ingredients list to what's readily available on the market. They list octanoxate, homosale, octasale, uvinol A+, and titanium dioxide. So we're going with the Village 11 Korean website. No, I cannot find any verification, certification on this, but realistically the way I see it is also the fact that YesStyle didn't take it off their available sunscreens and note some of the other ones from Village 11 are no longer available on YesStyle, so that's usually my gauge. And plus that makes the filters to me, I, I trust it. It's a lot of the same filters we use here in the US, and I'm going to assume it's at a justifiable quantity. Looking at other formulation points for this though, obviously there is centella extract in this. This is obviously Sika Sun Lotion. That's why I bought it in the first place. Love centella, was looking for products with centella, specifically sunscreen, and this popped up. And I remembered that people had mentioned it for the Village 11 sunscreen. Aside from that, you also have Hoytonia cordata, chamomile, and calendula. All of those lend some really nice soothing benefits. And then you also have vitamin E, which along with the centella and the Hoytonia and some other components of the formulation lend some antioxidant benefits. And that is lending itself to the marketing claims of helping to combat external aggressors. Antioxidants help protect from free radical damage. You also have chia seed extract and you have a bunch of different humectants. You have like fructo oligosaccharides and some other humectants that just ensure really nice hydration in the skin. You have sunflower seed oil, a few other conditioning oils and plant-based extracts, avocado fruit extract, and then aloe leaf vera extract. So there's just a lot of things in here that make this a hydrating, moisturizing, emollient formula. Even my fingers right now feel like slippy, greasy. So it's very moisturizing. Just note that it's, this is very dry skin appropriate. Foundation wear. I'm actually wearing this underneath a new foundation I'm testing out and I'm at hour six, I believe, of wearing this foundation without blotting or repowdering or anything. And I look very okay. Having oily skin, this is definitely a cause for concern. I would not wear this on the summer day, trust me. Even during winter now, when I first put it on, I was like, I will need to blot afterwards. But that being said, I didn't blot. I just put foundation on and I pressed that powder into it though. And I'm still looking very good six, plus hours later. This definitely though is much more dry skin appropriate. I'm pretty sure this is going to prep dry skin beautifully for foundation wear. But one thing I will note, and this goes back to the finish and the formulation and the filters, this does have titanium dioxide in it. This was all up in my beard, all up in my facial hair and in my hairline. You could definitely see the influence of that titanium dioxide. So it's not the most elegant if you have very dark hair, if you have facial hair, or if you have any Anything that this can like stick to in that regard. So then lastly, fragrance. And really let's talk about like sensitizing components. This is by technicality alcohol free. There is no denatured alcohol, ethanol, simple alcohol. This does have a tea butyl alcohol, which I actually don't know what that lends to the formulation necessarily, but it's also very far down on the ingredients list. So I'm not going to count that as a simple lower molecular weight alcohol necessarily. This does not have essential oils, but it does have actual fragrance in it. The smell of it, I can't really tell you what that smell is. It feels like there's something they're trying to use to cover up the sunscreen smell that a water resistant sunscreen would have. But to me, it just feels like plastic, it's plasticky. Ish, I guess. But overall, my final thoughts on this, this is a Korean sunscreen for dry skin, which I feel like is never really a thing. I feel like the big thing with Korean sunscreens is they're lightweight, their gels, they're great for oily skin because they're so elegant. And very rarely do I find a Korean sunscreen where I'm like, this is for dry skin. So if you have very, very dry skin, if you love a really rich moisturizing sunscreen texture, this is your girl. This gives you the finish of the new Pareto sunscreen, but it has a lot more body to it. And it definitely is a lot more emotional Emollient. The Pareto to me, it's weird because it's very radiant, it's moisturizing, but it's a very lightweight gel texture when it touches the skin. This is not, this gives me elegant European sunscreen, if you know what I mean, because some of these European sunscreens are just not the tea. Yeah, very surprised by this. I definitely do recommend trying this out if you have normal to dry skin, just because this was like $10 for 80 mil. Surprisingly, decently affordable option, although affordable is always subjective, but I'm not disappointed by this. I love the ingredients list. Is this necessarily for me? No, but am I making it work today? 
Yes. But I think for the rest of the year, I will definitely use this more as like a body sunscreen. But let me know down below in the comments section. Have you tried this out? What are your thoughts on it? Do they match my opinions? Let me know. And what, what other sunscreens? What other Korean sunscreens do you want to try? Do we like revisiting this single sunscreen review video style that I used to do back in the day? Or do you want to keep it like a compilation of sunscreens per review? Let me know down below in the comments section. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.